Lemon Amiga present. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Once again, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time we'll be checking out Robinson's Requiem. This was developed and published by Silmarils in 1994. Then we get to choose what language we want, French, German or English. And of course, this being a later Amiga game, it begins with a space intro. This isn't full screen, but I've blown it up to almost full screen to give you some idea what this could have looked like. that title screen where we get to see Robinson's Requiem displayed in all of its AGA glory on our screen and nice rendered font and then we get to move on to the coders you can see Andre Rockies, or Roques went on to, well, he worked on the Ishar games, Ishar 1 and 2, and also coded Colorado as well, and you might remember most of these programmers worked on Silmarils other games, they're all French, and so you might remember Transarctica, and Starblade, which we have reviewed, and also Boston Bomb Club, I think came out maybe 91, and this was a 1994 release. After that we get to move on to the options menu. From here we can turn off various things and increase our difficulty as well. And so I'm running a fast Amiga, let's put everything on maximum. And I'm not sure if the music works because I haven't got a CD in it at the moment. And I think if you have the CD version you get CD quality music, I'm not quite sure. Um, control of climate, let's just leave that off for now or on, whatever that might be, let's just leave it on stock and then click start to start that new game at the beginning of the game you've got absolutely no idea what you're supposed to be doing unless you've got the manual and the manual will only explain the buttons to press and it will explain how to actually play the game on the first button we have a map and the map shows us our first objective that's our priority that's the one and the only objective which will appear on the map during the entire game and you can see various buttons that we can press we can have a look at the stats use and combine clothing medical and that kind of thing and you can see we're on day one it's eight 15 in the morning and it's 28 degrees outside so we'll have to combat the sun in this game and the sun will deplete our energy we also have a compass and a pause which will show us if we're running or lying down and we can also press the keypad keys as well you can see pressing those in the various directions will hopefully move us around this landscape We can see a guy over there, let's talk to him. And hello, I'm a survivor, welcome to holiday. And this is your first day, welcome to an alien planet. And so I'm here to help you. And 
Uh, don't let me find you here in this area again. Well, hostile words there, so we've got a fist now. What can we do with that? Well, the first thing we need to do is knock this guy out. And you can see as the guy approaching us, he's got something at the bottom of his trousers that look like his trousers are untied, but if we keep punching this guy, hopefully he'll fall over and that means that we can now collect something that he's dropped and you can simply back up at that point and take a look around but because of the control system I'm actually strafing at the moment so I'm struggling to learn how to control the game We spawn here in the jungle at the very start of the game. You can see a nice lake and waterfall and some trees and lots more trees, some palm trees and some other trees you can see dotted around. So there are at least four or five different types of trees here on the very first section of the game. And we're not carrying anything at the moment. And right now the player is going to be completely lost as to what they're supposed to be doing unless they manage to find that body so let's run back and let's find that body by clicking on that with our cursor that will then pick up anything that's lying around in this case we've managed to get something that requires a battery and we'll take a look at that in a second we've also found a gourd that's a bottle and a match to create a fire as well so at this point the player would think oh well we've got the ability to make fire we've got kind of a computery thing and a bottle and then they would simply run away but if you remember that guy attacked us with a knife so at some point somewhere around here there will be a knife and if you find the exact pixel that, that is on somehow you will then pick it up and then we can perhaps double click on that to drop it into our inventory and that's the most important item in the game the survival knife now that we have that we can collect some branches, let's collect 10 of them and they will come in handy later on for when we need balls and arrows and everything in the game will have a weight and as soon as we reach our maximum weight we're going to have to drop something otherwise we will slow down to an absolute grind and we can even stop in this game if we are carrying too much and sometimes if we are unable to put something down then that means we are stopped dead in the game so that's an unwinnable situation, never eat too much and never fall into this water either otherwise we'll drown and never drink the water either otherwise we'll get poisoned so let's put the cord in the water and now we've got one litre of muddy swamp water well done that's our first task completed we've got the knife, we've got the muddy swamp water As long as we don't sink we can get over to the other side and you might think that this is a terrific cherry tree that we can pick from. Unfortunately those are poison apples so if you eat them you're going to die. So there isn't much on the friendly side on this very first level and it doesn't even tell the player that they're supposed to kill everything and everybody that they see in the entire game. The player will simply get that dawned upon them as they play it and yes everything must be collected and eaten and killed in order to get through it right now we are virtually defenseless and right now i'm heading into the hills let's see if we find something in this valley and there is always something to pick up so let's see if there is anything there i can't see anything right at this minute and so let's take a look around sometimes there is maybe a plant to some kind of foliage and what is that? that looks like something and that's actually cauliflower and that will also wear us down so in the tips and the solution and the walkthroughs they recommend simply eating that cauliflower straight away you can see this is the crash site and this is where we are at the moment so in order to find the crash site which is of course not labelled on the map we'll have to go back there and investigate that area We 
without the music you can hear all the jungle sounds and you'll hear different soundscapes as we move through the different areas in the game. And that's the dead body that we've just walked past again. And yes, everything that we've killed will stay there for the rest of the game. If we save up the game, I think those bodies even stay there and survive a save. Not quite sure, but you can see now we're heading back towards the start of it again. More or less where we started out in that valley. And if we're struggling, we can always bring up the map. And in this game, you can even run whilst using the map. Yes, it's just like Alien Breed and all those other 3D shooters that we've seen this series. We can actually run in the map screen. That will mean things move a lot quicker. In this particular valley, you'll find some wreckage from the ship or the shuttle thing that crashed. And you'll also find a bridge as well that spans the entire thing. And I think we'll be moving over that bridge later on. For now, we've found one piece of wire. So the aim of this mini task is to go around collecting up all the wire. You've no idea how many there are. I think there are six to collect of which I'm going to be collecting five on this particular playthrough but if you collect up all the wires they will be useful later on. There's also a first aid kit to pick up and the first aid kit at least looks like a first aid kit, there it is. So if you go and pick that up, that's the most essential item in the game except for the knife. So let's pick that up and that gives us all the drugs and all that paraphernalia that we're going to need to survive. For now, let's just continue trying to find those bits of wire. You can see different types of bushes on the floor and different types of things and if it's something odd then it must be something to do with the game so well, that's five bits of wire now you can see all kinds of bottles and needles that we're gonna have to know how to use and some of those are anti-venom and anti-poison suckers so we're gonna need to put those into a needle and suck out the poison if we don't know how to do that we're simply going to die and so let's save it up at this point now that we've got through that mini puzzle let's call this the first save and it's on day one, we're now 9.55 in the morning, it's now 28 degrees. So it's very warm, luckily we're not wearing virtually anything at this point. And this is called Robinson's Requiem because it's based on Robinson Crusoe. So if you know the Robinson Crusoe stories, it was shipwrecked on a deserted desert island and he had palm trees and he had Man Friday and things like that. In this game, you don't have any Man Friday, Wednesday or Saturday. What you do have is tons and tons of palm trees and the feeling that you are completely out of your depth. I'm now heading back towards that lake and what I'm actually doing at the moment, I have absolutely no idea. You have to get some kind of a mission into your head and aim for that at every stage, otherwise you'll be wandering around blindly. And sometimes if you use the knife on these trees, they'll give you branches. And sometimes if you use the knife on these trees, they'll actually give you some leaves. So now this is the second half of the first section that we're walking into, second half of the jungle. Here you'll find maybe the same trees, but you'll also find something that will eat us if we're not careful. You can see we've got some disinfectant there, and we can use those disinfectant pellets in the water bottle, and that will make the water clear and drinkable. We don't need to drink any water at the moment, but having disinfected that water by selecting that and then selecting the water, that means it's now safe to drink. So finally, now that we're getting some kind of protection, it means that things, or at least the environment, isn't going to instantly kill us. And we do have a means now of getting fresh water. We don't have a means of getting fresh food, unfortunately. And what is that? That looks like another survivor.
Me, I'm not bad, I don't feel well, cough, cough, and suddenly he turns into a ravaging man-eating werewolf. Luckily, you don't have to aim absolutely on target to kill those things, as long as you're pointing it in their general direction. So that's another computer. And I think that there was maybe a box of goodies to pick up behind this guy, I've no idea. And I thought that there was something, but again, unless you find that and click on the pixel, you're probably not going to find it. Let's see what we have picked up. Well, all this medical stuff that we're going to have to memorise. Um, well, there's quite a lot of that. Uh, negligible weight. It will tell us the weight of every single thing. Those are the disinfectants. What else have we got? Bottle of this, that and the other. So, let's use the disinfectant with the water. And once you've done that, it will tell you that there's no water to disinfect. And there's now one litre of drinkable water now in that flask. We've also got some branches. And by mixing things together, we can actually invent things in this game. And so, what are we? Well, we're just about to move into the tiger lair. We don't want to do that at the moment. If we move any further ahead, we're going to get killed. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do the penultimate objective on this very first section and that is to kill the eagle. We don't have to do that, we don't have to kill the eagle and get the eagle egg and things like that. But that will give us some feathers that we might need for creating things. So it's a killer, yet again if you get killed by the men by not punching them in time you'll get killed. And if you drink the wrong water you'll get killed. And you can see we've already injured ourselves several times by getting into fights. And we are unprotected at the moment. And so we'll have to check out these guys for clothing. Let's see what we've got. We've got an infection on our skull. That's a benign infection. We've also got a stomach complaint. And we've also got something else as well. So what can we do? Well, we could bandage ourselves up for one thing. And if we take some aspirin or, well, antispasmonic, no, tranquilizer, we could take a tranquilizer, well, we certainly don't want to take the cyanide pill. So if you take some aspirin, which is the blue bottle on the corner, that will help us recover. And we could also patch ourselves up. Now, just a small task of climbing up this mountainside. And if we wander too far off the mountainside, unfortunately we're going to die. And that's what happens in this game. If you do anything, you're just going to die. What's this? It looks suspiciously like, yes, another cauliflower. And it calls it, I think, in its Latin name. And, well, again, the tips on this game say you're supposed to eat it straight away. But you can see we're full of food at the moment, full of liquid. And those cauliflowers will contain a small amount of liquid. So we don't need to worry too much about those or weighing ourselves down at this moment. But we do need to perilously get up to the side of this cliff face. And then we need to get attacked. And once we are attacked, then we can defend ourselves against the eagle. We don't have much at the moment. All we have is a knife. So aiming for the eagle with the knife is difficult. And you have to aim with that thing on target. And once it strikes, that means we'll have to readjust our aim. So here it comes. We 
can defeat the eagle with punching it and also with the knife but if you aren't quick enough to defeat the eagle or if you let it strike what it will do is knock out one of our eyes and then eventually it will knock out both of them Once it knocks out both of our eyes, we will be completely blind. And if it knocks out one eye, then that's that eye lost for the rest of the game. And it could be the left or the right eye. And as soon as both of them go, then that's basically it. So hence saving this game up, let's trundle our way back again. So here we are. Before we do that, let's see what else we can get. Let's get some more leaves. That's 14 leaves. They don't weigh much. So that's okay and let's just get some more leaves then while we're here that's 14 21 leaves so let's just hopefully help us what else have we got a nappy pin and we can combine what can we combine the leaves i think and maybe the the needle and that creates a hat so now we've picked up the clothing from one of the survivors we can now put the hat on and we can also take off our jacket because you know what it's pretty hot out here so we've now got a hat unfortunately you have to get into some kind of a routine to get rid of this bird because if you don't it's going to make mincemeat out of us I managed to find online a list of all the creatures in the game and whereabouts they are in the game and how they attack and you might notice the eagle it basically is instant death so if you get attacked by this thing well the tiger is instant death and the eagle will pack out your eyes until you go blind and then when that happens all you can do is fall off the ravine and kill yourself you won't die instantly but you can eventually die and that's the bird eventually dead if you keep backing up on the spot then that should hopefully mean that you can get rid of it so let's get some feathers while we're here I don't think there's any feathers available at any other point in the game but that's okay we've got 61 of them and there's also into the eagle's nest of course we can find an egg an eagle's egg and this isn't a dizzy game we don't need to put the eagle's egg next to the troll brew and untie the goat next to the troll bridge and things like that unfortunately you can eat that raw or you can cook it over a fire you don't have too many matches to light fires with so it's a good idea to light fires only when you need to cook something and usually at the end of the day unfortunately with this game you can see i'm perilously close to the edge of that cliff and it's given us virtually absolutely no hint at all of how to get down it. I've actually fallen off this cliff already so I'm trying to get down it and try to get back to the valley and yep just falling off it again and that means I've gone blind I've knocked myself out and if you keep stumbling around in the dark you'll eventually die and it says well cause of death violent traumatic head blow to the head basically you fell off a cliff so let's not do that anymore it's very difficult There's the bird again we've saved it up just as we got rid of that bird which is fantastic so now let's make our way down it again let's speed up this footage slightly so we don't have to put it with that follow the green area and make your way around the corner there it is so that you don't fall off the cliff and the graphics in this game do not make negotiation of it any easier Now we need to head up towards the other Robinson, the other survivor and at this point we're going to save it up because now the last task is to avoid the tiger. We don't have anything to kill it at the moment and if the tiger kills us unfortunately we're going to die. If the tiger sees us and we're standing up then it will attack and we'll die 
and so before all that happens it's going to ask us for some ridiculous password protection system from the manual and I think this is a crack so I'm not sure it I don't think I'm going to enter anything in but you can see if you don't enter it quick enough the screen goes blank and that means that if the tiger can see us right now we're going to die and that has happened to me before and it's happened to me right now so we're now dead because of that stupid password protection system that happens on the tiger screen of all places of all places in the game they couldn't just have put it before then no they had to put it on it so let's cautiously creep now you can see in the bottom corner we're now crawling on our hands and knees and if we're crawling on our hands and knees then that means well if we hold down both of the mouse buttons we can crawl so if we hold down both mouse buttons at the same time and push the keys on the keypad you can see the tiger wandering up and down and that's actually wandering between an island and the side of that canyon so if we time it so that we can get past the tiger just as it's turning around hopefully and we don't stand up like this otherwise it will be able to see us so keep those mouse buttons pressed and again it doesn't even give you the slightest hint about this in the manual or in the game itself so I'm risking life and limb here what we need to do is to get around the island in the middle of the canyon and that puts the island in between us that's not obvious but you can see that actually on the map let's crawl around it and having crawled around it it now gives us the password protection system which is a bit more handy now that we are now safe so forget about all that we're now safe what's going on now let's save it up again at this point keep saving it up as soon as you survive it we're now behind the island in the canyon woohoo so from this point on I think I like to run like heck down through the canyon hopefully so that the tiger doesn't see us let's see what I did on this particular playthrough let's inch our way let's back our way around it looking out for that tiger um, so well, I can't see anything hopefully I'm going in the right direction let's run 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 as fast as we can hold down actually it's the right mouse button to run so now we're running run as fast as we can and hopefully that's got us even though this is quite disorientating it's now got us through the canyon now we've found a strange tree it's got strange sap like roots all over it so what does that give us it gives us some resin what can we do? Well, we can light a fire, we can use things, but if we click on the spanner, that's actually combine. So let's combine something. And let's see if we can remember off the top of my head what things do. And let's see, the resin. Well, we've now created a torch by combining the resin and the branches. Let's create two of them because we're going to need it, we've only got 20 matches but we're going to be moving into a dark area so I'm going to need them let's strip off some of the bandages we've now healed and we have to check our medical condition constantly to see how hot and cold we are and we're going to be going into a cave so let's put the jacket on because it's going to get cold let's put on our jacket so I think there's a swamp here so you don't really want to be falling down into that what else can we get let's just speed it up let's get some more resin so we need to combine the resin and the sticks and look at that a side part unless you're looking at the map you won't even notice that but a side avenue to this canyon leads you into the cave in the cave it's all dark and you can't see a thing that's because you need to use something we've got a torch so let's use a match now on the torch hopefully there's something like that combine it and there you go it's finally lit so we can now see a very dark cave in front of us and now animals start piling up for us to kill And look at that, we've created our first arrow by combining 
and the stick and the feathers and the arrows definitely will come in handy later on. For now we need a bow and we haven't got a bow. We'll need to get a bow in the swamp. So the first thing to do is to find the swamp exit first of all which is in that area and if you see any dark areas dotted around the map those are actually pitfalls if you go through into the dark areas you actually fall down and die so what do we now uh, well 7 degrees C it's absolutely freezing out there it's 12 almost 1 p.m. on day one and so it's sunny outside but it's freezing in here 7 degrees so I'm glad I put on that jacket we can't do anything with the arrow so let's hope we can persevere with the knife. We get a range of sound effects in the caves. We can also get stuck on the walls of the caves. And we also get gorillas. I think most of the animals will always drop something behind, some kind of meat for us to pick up. And then you can toast that and roast that on an open fire. And so most of the time I think you can click on them. And so as we venture further down the cave there are other things to find and discover. So I think this is a saltpeter deposit. Anybody who knows anything about saltpeter knows that it's one of the ingredients of gunpowder. We're supposed to click on it to collect it and I have no idea it's not actually doing anything at the moment maybe we're supposed to look down at the ground but that will help us a bit later on we haven't collected anything at the moment so maybe we need some kind of well I'm sure I've collected that before so let's wander around now and run around see if we can find the exit <laughs> Be your way through and this is very disorientating when you're trying to get through these and you can see two shots on target is better than four which are roughly on target so you have to aim in this game and it's very rudimentary it reminds me of Legends of Valor and you'll find all different things and look at that nice cave exit that gives us an exit now to the swamp the swamp and in here hopefully it's daytime at night a huge t-rex will come around and gobble us up and kill us and so you have to avoid this area at night at all costs and there's a hidden village and also a hidden robinson to find as well and there are tons of enemies in the swamp who will try to kill us so we'll have to run through the swamp pretty quickly and we can do that as long as we're not fatigued Let's just check out our physical edition and if we've been in a dark place well we've got flu or at least a bad cold so what can we do about that? It's a good job to take some medication, maybe some aspirin as well, maybe some antibiotics as soon as you come out of a cave and that means that you can, let's see, tranquilizer, quinine, um, I think that's for malaria, quinine, antispasmodic and aspirin that'll do let's collect one of them so that'll just help get us through the bad cold and so let's see we've got 49 of them left which is quite good we're bandaged up and so always check ourselves out and make sure to see what temperature we're on and i'm keeping the jacket on unfortunately because there are some man-eating plants and i think it's easy to get snagged on them if you've got the jacket on and it's easier to get hit and hurt if you take the jacket off so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna leave it on In 
the swamp, you'll find swamp monsters, and they are very difficult to kill with our weedy knife. If you collect all of the swamp monster skins and use those with a needle, that means that you can create a swamp monster snake suit, and that helps us keep warm in cold places. So that's a top tip, collect all the hides from the swamp monsters. And we've also collected some rope now, and that's fantastic, rope. We've got the rope, so that's one of the key items that we need for creating the ball and the arrows, I think. Let's see now. Uh, let's combine that with the needle and the sticks. We've only got four of them left. And anyway, that's created the ball, so now we can use the arrow. And we'll need to save all those up. We haven't got many sticks left, unfortunately. Let's get some more rope. So, that's good. We've found another item. As we are wandering around the endless jungle, it does actually tell us where the Robinson is. That's because the computer will show up on our computer readout. We've got one of those computers ourselves, and we're supposed to collect them up from all the other Robinsons by killing them. And so that's the end of the game. Even the ones that say, I can help you, right at the end of the game, you're going to have to kill them anyway. And then, uh, I think this game's one of them that's got a weird ending, so... That's pretty strange that you should have to do that. This is supposed to be a survival game, and yet everything that you're doing is killing everything else. So it's more or less a massacre game, dressed up as a survival game. And I'm trying my best to run away from those swamp monsters, actually because they can inflict some damage and we don't really want to get caught in the swamp in the dark let's see how close we are to that robin's well miles away it looks like so let's try again this place can be very disorientating at the best of times because of this identical looking scenery so sometimes it's best to navigate your way around on the map hello you old scoundrels still chasing skirt this time i'm ahead of you I've got a great plan, let's work together, let's become a team, let's become friends, let's do this and let's do that. Okay, fine. What do I do? Well, it's given us, oh, it's given us a necklace, a uh, native necklace, that's for the villagers. Let's put the necklace on, so we've now got the hat and the necklace. Great. And then, obviously, let's get the knife out, and unfortunately you can't kill him, he just disappears, but he will return later on in the game. necklace means that we don't get attacked when we get into the village. You can see a tree house there and a tree house ladder hanging down and that's fun to see all those hidden touches and there are some hidden touches in the game. Where are we now? Right let's head on to the village. The village is in the top corner and there are some man-eating plants around here but as long as you stay roughly in the middle of this bit of a ravine then we should be able to get through it without getting eaten alive. Everything will kill us in this game. So, kill or be killed. And some of the comments about this game said that this was one of the very first survival games, of which, of course, there are tons of them at the moment. And survival is now a genre. I'm not sure about that, because other games which predated this, you had to survive as well in various ways and contexts. So, the art of survival was even in Eco, the game that we are reviewing this series. Uh, peace friend, do you have blah de blah de blah, come night, kill Friday, okay, oh, no, no, no problem. They're telling me about the swamp beast which appears at night, and that's the T-Rex that will come and kill us. And they're asking us to protect us against that swamp beast. So, later on in the game, we'll find a flare gun, hopefully and firing the flare gun up at the T-Rex and firing loads of balls and arrows into it. Should mean that we can kill it. It takes ages to kill it and need tons of them, but it is possible because I've done it. So for now that's the village and they aren't really giving us much, they're just giving us the mission information and there is a hidden stegosaurus as well in the village but for now it looks very much like we're walking back all the way back, yes here's the tunnel that leads back to the caves. 
So we've done that, we've got a necklace for now, and now that we're in the caves we'll need to find our way back again to the jungle. Whilst we are asleep we'll be contacted by another survivor and the survivor is in a different zone across the island or across the location so you're going to have to find her before the end of the game. And that's a clue just the two of us remain because all the rest of them have to be killed but you'll find tons of Robinsons, I think there's maybe 13 of them. So here we are in our fast forwarding, this is the entrance to the cave, hopefully we're now on day two and we've camped here overnight. So now let's check out our stuff and you can get to see a full list of things that we can apply to ourselves to repair ourselves, all of which hopefully should be in the manual because that's at least a good thing and it doesn't actually label anything in the game itself. And sedatives we can use if we can't get to sleep. And cyanide is absolutely useless. And of course you have to be careful what you're clicking on. Because some of these things might be useful and sometimes not. And we've now created 10 arrows. By collecting bits of wood, I think in the swamp. And now... It's our job to practice firing those arrows before we face the tiger again. This time we've got arrows and it's immensely unwieldy at the best of times. And this reminds me of Conquest of the Longbow that we saw. So here we go, we're sneaking up on the tiger. If it sees us it will attack us and that means we've only got a limited time to hit it before we end up in its stomach. So it's the art of creeping up and if you don't hit it on target, it will run towards us anyway, and we'll die. So I hope you've saved it up at this point. Of course, if we run out of arrows, we'll also not be able to make it unless we sneak through. I think we can actually sneak through, get some more arrows on the other side. Phew, that means that we're down to three arrows left from the ten. And, of course, nothing, nothing, nothing. Let's use the knife. You always have to use the knife on these things to get anything out of them. And that's the top tip. So let's skin it, let's get its fur. And I think you can get more than one fur out of a tiger, I'm not quite sure. But now the fur is something else that we can pick up. Let's check it again, let's see, yep, that's another one. And that will automatically go into our fur store. And if we keep skinning it, we can get some meat out of it as well. So if you use the knife on any of these items, in the swamp, in the monkeys, we can get some meat. With swamp, we can get some lizard skins. And the tiger, we can get tons of meat off the bone. So we've now got two types of different meat from I think the lizards and the tigers we've also got some fur as well and no water okay that's drinkable water let's I think drink that and we've still got the eagle's egg let's have a look day well it is day two even though it says day one we've got through day zero it's now six o'clock in the morning it's now 27 degrees so it's still boiling so we could do with taking our jacket off and you can see out of 74 kilograms it's now piling up now in our inventory. Luckily in the jungle we won't die of anything, we won't die of any diseases of which there are tons from bad colds to malaria to chronic heart conditions, fear of fright of you know this and that and the other, you can die of fright in this game. So what's this, we found a worm, we found a wormhole in a worm and I think, well, that's 20 worms, that's rather overkill, but you can see by combining items together. And what can we do? Well, we can 
hopefully make the twig and the rope and the worm and also the safety pin uh, that's the needle let's find the safety pin here it is that gives us a baited fishing rod and I think you can create the fishing rod anyway and then just combine the worm with the fishing rod to bait it now finally we've got a fishing rod and what can you do with that well if you notice in the jungle there was actually a lake so let's not fall into the lake but we can actually use our new fishing rod let's well we don't have to do anything at the moment let's fire it in there and at complete random we'll pull out a fish eventually even if you are fishing on the same spot even though it might take from one to ten tries to actually pull one out It would be fantastic if this was a major part of the game, unfortunately it isn't and you won't probably be returning back to this spot again for the duration of it. So let's just make the most out of this and most of the places that we're going to visit don't even contain water. So apart from one cave, this is the last water that we're going to see in the game. And that's now a fish. So we've now got a fish, that's fantastic. What can we do with that? Well, we can start a fire by clicking on the fire symbol. And now, hopefully, what have we got? Look at that, salt pizza is now in the bottom. So we did pick it up after all. And by clicking on the fish, while it's there, it says fried fish. So we've now eaten the fried fish. It will automatically, I think, cook it on the fire. If not, you can wave the fish into the fire and you can pre-cook meat as well. We've got tons of raw meat at the moment. So it would be a good idea to cook it. And sing fried fish, sing fried fish. So it's great to roast things, including eggs and dinosaur meats and all kinds of things in this game. And not quite sure what's happening. Oh, I'm asleep at the moment, so that's why the lights have gone out. Let's wake up. And that just restores our vitality for a little bit. Sleeping on the job, but if you're sleeping next to a fire, that's absolutely critical in a cave otherwise you'll die and outside it's always helpful if you're sleeping by the side of a fire because that keeps enemies away so we're gonna do that and we're now leaving this area and there's only one exit to this area that's through an invisible exit and right at the top of the map you can see a slope and up that slope is a flat part and then a bridge so we're going to go through this and we're going to go up that slope and across that flat point and attempt to go over the bridge. So where are we at the moment? Let's have a look. Well, we're still among the wreckage it looks like on that part of the map next to the crash site. Unfortunately you don't get a huge great thing sticking out of the ground to explore like a, a shuttle. Where am I going now? I'm absolutely completely lost. Right, there it is. That's supposed to be the ramp. And how the player's supposed to know that, I've no idea. But that's supposed to be the ramp now that we need to exit this part of the level. So, you've seen the swamp and you've seen the first cave. And now, let's take a look. Before we leave this area, make sure you've eaten something. Make sure you've drunk the water and resupply on the water from the lake and purify the water so that you can drink it later. Also make sure that you're also physically fit and it doesn't matter if you have bandages on because we're about to go into another cave and the bandages will help us actually keep warm. So that's fine. And so there's the bridge that we need to walk past. We'll just walk straight past it and we need to get over that bridge. Let's speed up this footage and this is the precarious part. You don't need me to tell you, if we fall off the bridge, we'll die. So, that's the theme of this game. It's not obvious, let's look out. You can look down, and it's not obvious which way we have to go. It's pixel perfect balancing on the edge of this platform, like a Jet Set Willy game. So, here we are, we've reached the other side. And on the other side, we are now safe. So sometimes the environment itself will kill us and otherwise a tiger will come along and do that job for us. So we've now got a tiger on the job. 
We're carrying 31 kilograms, and so we've now got four arrows. Let's hope we've got enough arrows to kill this thing. Otherwise, we're going to die. We're going to have to reload it again. That's all of our arrows gone. Luckily, it only took three of them to knock out the tiger. So again, let's use the knife. Let's not wield it. And now, just like Far Cry and all those other games, we can now strip the tiger. And yes, this game predates Far Cry and all those survival games. We get to survive and butcher things up. This was the very first example, as far as I know. Even though survival has been in games for a long time, I remember Colony on the Commodore 64 he had to survive. Anyway, once you find the fur, if you mix the fur with the needle and thread, that gives us some boots. We'll need the boots in the cave. Well, we don't have to put them on, but if we put the boots on in the cave, that'll keep our feet nice and warm. That means we don't slow down and hang around in the cave. We've still got our jacket and our trousers, and eventually you'll find enough animals to skin them and you'll be able to get yourself a fur coat and fur mittens and maybe even a fur hat as well so definitely once you've got all the lizard skins and all the furs that gives you protection and I think even the lizard skin gives you protection against the heat in the desert which is fantastic otherwise you'll just have to run around the desert as naked as you can do so what I'm actually doing, I'm creating some more arrows at the moment because we've run out. So let's combine the feathers and the sticks. The feathers aren't too much of a problem, but the sticks, you need to know which trees to get them from. And if you're carrying too many, as I say, if you're carrying three loads of sticks, that means you'll be unable to move. Hopefully, let's check ourselves out again. And we've got the boots on, everything's looking okay before we go into the next cave. And it's a good idea to save it up at this point as well. Every time you accomplish something in the game or get through to something, save it up. As you might imagine, in the second cave there are even more pits of death, but it's a lot smaller than you might imagine because the first section, this bit over here, is the only bit that we can access. That bit in the middle is actually a lake, and we can't get over that lake to access the middle bit. And I think we'll need to access the middle bit later, once we get the lantern. Once we've got the lantern, it doesn't matter about crossing water. And so, for now, let's just explore this area. That's the main area that we've managed to find. And there might be some creatures in here as well. Well, there's actually Robinson, it looks like, in this corner. So it looks like the Robinsons do flash in the game. That gives you some idea of what to do. But there are also pterodactyls in here as well. It's far easier and perhaps even safer to hit them with a the longbow. And that wastes arrows, but that at least guarantees a hit. You don't have too many branches. Well, we do have tons of branches at this point. So we're not too worried about the arrows, but there are two pterodactyls in here to kill. And they will kill us and peck out our eyeballs if we're not careful. And I think we can even use the knife on them to get some meat, just like everything else in the game. Well, let's meet this Robinson anyway. And right from the go, we're fighting that guy. I think he gives us some aggressive talk as soon as you meet him. Looks like I've cut that bit out, but I'm going to have to kill him anyway. So let's just get on with doing that. <laughs> And sometimes the Robinsons or even the animals will get stuck behind something. And 
that looks like what's happened at the moment, that's great because it gives us time to bandage ourselves up while that guy is stuck. And then we can create some more arrows as well. And that's fantastic. As soon as we move and try to take on this enemy, he will not get stuck behind the scenery, he can see his legs as there. So hopefully we can get rid of him now. And then let's see what he's got. He's got another computer because all of these guys have got their own computer sesame classification, whatever, whatever. And their own battery as well. That looks like a razor. And if you catch yourself sneezing in the game, it's because we're actually getting a cold. We can yawn as well, we can cough, we can laugh, we can cry, we can get hiccups. And if you're getting sunstroke, you might start crying. So that gives you some idea of the infections and the diseases. We can't really do much about that until, look at that, we even found a Game Boy. We can't do that until we get outside because as soon as we get outside we can then build a fire and do something about it. At the moment I've moved on to the lake and the lake, I think there's another pterodactyl in here that I had to kill and the lake, as I say, you can't get through it anyway because that will extinguish our torch and we'll start to get cold now, swimming in cold lakes and that means we'll get flu and then hypothermia and die. So I can't see what I'm doing at the moment. Let's just check out the map. And we can climb out of the lake on the other side. But there's nothing for us to do on the other side, I don't think, at this point in the game. And there are two pterodactyls to kill us as well. And when we climb out on the other side, we can light a torch. That's not a bad thing, but we can actually see where we're going. Let's have a look. But if we try and move off this rock, that we're on at the moment, we'll fall back into the water just like that. And that means we can't see we're going again. <coughs> the kids are at least mostly safe, unless you wander into a pit of death, and unless the pterodactyls kill us. And now we're going out into another region. You can see this one is going to be a lot hotter than the cave. We're now in the canyon. Let's save it up. It's still day two. It's now one o'clock in the afternoon and it's getting very hot. Let's drink some water. And, well, water level's going down. Let's drink some more water. And so we're boiling hot. It gives us our body temperature as well, which is boiling hot at the moment. And what can we do? Well, I really need to click on that clothes hanger. Let's take off the furry boots for one thing. And I'm not sure if you can make yourself sandals out of all our paraphernalia. What else? Let's take off the jacket. And we can take off, well, do we really? Yeah, we can take off the pants, the trousers. And we can also, well, we can, I think we can take off the shirt as well. Then again, let's keep it on for now. We don't really want to get sunstroke, which is entirely possible in the game. In the canyon, you'll find all kinds of things. And some things are deadly. You'll start to find spiders as well, deadly spiders in here. But also, just like, again, Far Cry and things like that, we'll find some nice plants. So, a wild flower, and we can eat them. And I'm not sure what that does, but we can start collecting wild plants and maybe even mix them together into a potion later on. I've never completed this game. In fact, this is the very first time I've managed to get this far with it. I recorded this play guide three times. The first time was several years ago, and all of the game, as far as this point, was recorded, but it got deleted and corrupted and it wouldn't play. So I lost everything. So a few years ago, or two years ago or whatever, I tried to record it all again and I did that, but for whatever reason it didn't work again. I think I clicked on record and it didn't save a frame of it. So this is the third time now that I've recorded this game 
and hopefully, well, this is the furthest I've ever got with it. So you can see another bridge. We'll have to go over the top of that bridge a little bit later. And what else can we do? Let's just have a play around. We can even use, let's see, we can use a Game Boy whilst we're here. I think whilst we're under the bridge, we're particularly safe. And let's see, can we combine things together? Well, that's a splint. And I don't think, well, yes, we can put the splint down in case we break our leg. Or we can put that on one of our limbs. And that will mean that if we walk forwards, now we'll walk forwards more directly because we're wearing a splint. So that's even possible. Every medical thing that you can imagine is possible in this game, virtually. So you now staggering around with a splint on, staggering through a boiling hot canyon, trying to find our next guy. Welcome friend, remember me? I'm another friend. You certainly don't have to kill me. And uh, let's have a look, we're on this planet. And if you bring me all of these open sesame things, I can put them all together into a master computer and we can get off this forbidden rock. Fantastic. So you can see where all of all those guys are in all those different locations. You're going to have to find them all and kill them all eventually. And so a few at the bottom as well. If you try to kill this guy, it's not going to do anything. You disappoint me, friend. You haven't got all the sesames I wanted. Come back and see me again when you've got all of them. So that at least gives us a clue of our main mission. Get all those guys dead, including this guy who's the last one. So you need to kill him to get the last one and then you'll need to give them to Nina, I think it is. And she will be able to put those things together and get yourselves off this planet. So that's that guy I talked to and he's given us a heads up on the general mission. Now we'll need to hopefully get up on yet another incline which is absolutely not obvious on the map. And using that incline we're supposed to go over and climb up that. Again if we fall off it will break a leg and break our neck. And we'll need to get over another bridge and that's some more flowers, some different types of flowers, different trees and we've already fallen off it so it's a lot easier if you do it on the map to be honest and then you can actually see at least try to see on I'm falling off it again is it over here is it up here I think you follow the blue flowers follow that one and then follow this one hopefully now that we're I think this is the top of the bridge that we're now rolling along and we don't want to fall off here and yep yeah, that's the top of the bridge and now on top of here is the village that's another village that's not the same village that we found before but this village is actually guarded by I think four guys and those four guys have got spears and if we use our usual attack and retreat technique of backing up We'll simply back up over the side of this hill and die. So, once we killed at least one of them, we can pick up his spear, hopefully. But they are masters of dodging arrows. course for this game was a mixed opinion and some magazines said that there was an Amiga 500 version which was meant to be coming out but it never did. This is the AGA version it came out on seven discs which isn't too bad but I can't imagine the disc swapping involved and so the scores were another mixed bag. Amiga Power only gave this 39% comparing this to a first person dizzy game. They said that there's no spells to cast, there's no character selection screens or anything like that, no leveling up, no wizard spell points and things like that, and HP and life points and all the rest of it. And so they gave this game 39%. We've now 
now killed one of these guys, great, and that means we can pick up his spear. And that means we can now wield it, hopefully, against the other guys. But we have to be careful. If we try to get to the village the wrong way, we'll simply fall off the mountain and die. Lemon Amiga currently gave this 60% and they said it was a missed opportunity and they praised the fact that this was an early survival game. Amiga Joker gave this 78%, The One gave it 81% and Amiga Format awarded this 82%. There is also some spiders as well in this part of the vicinity. You have to be very quick to kill those, just like the tigers. And they will poison us as well if they manage to suck their fangs into us. And that means we'll need the suction pump to suck out the poison. And then we'll also need the anti-venom serum. And then we'll also need the aspirin and maybe the anti-spasmodic as well. So you have to be... A doctor, in order to understand the game, you have to be a survival expert to come up with all these ingenious contraptions. You have to be um, an arrow shooting expert to shoot down all these things before the killers, and also a puzzle solving expert to figure out what we're supposed to be doing in the first place. You can see we're just about to walk into another cave now, right at the bottom of the canyon, and so the final score came from a meek concept. They give this game 91%. So, Amiga 4 map praised this, saying that it was an epic PC like adventure that we rarely ever get on the Amiga, and they praised the fact that it avoids D and D cliches, or AD and D cliches, like spell points and hit points and all the rest of it. And so, the magazines and the comments that hated it said, You haven't got a clue how to play it, and you just get lost, and it's too deep for its own good. And the magazines that loved it said it's got tons and tons of depth and it was way ahead of its time. That means the average score for Robinson's Requiem is 7 out of 10. We find ourselves in another cave and now we also find ourselves with a Velociraptor. Those animals are difficult to kill with the lowly knife. We haven't picked up any weapons yet, but we can, of course, skin these animals, get some more meat out of them. So where are we now? Look at this cave complex. Hopefully if we carry on here to the south, I think that will reveal the cave exit. I think it's a pretty narrow exit, but again, the map... Well, there it is. The map doesn't show us those great graphics. So let's narrowly squeeze through that cave into the desert. And it shows us a Robinson. And if you fall into the pits of lava in the desert, you'll die. So if you're not looking directly in front of us, and we're wandering around on the map screen, we'll simply die walking into a pit of lava. Or whatever it is, it's kind of another toxic swamp. And they are dotted all over the desert at regular intervals, just in the wrong places. So if you fall into them by mistake, and even our arrows disappeared, so I've no idea where I am at the moment. But if you fall into those, you'll die. Well, I've no idea what I'm supposed to be doing in the game after this point. And I think I'm supposed to be looking for a flare gun somewhere. And this is later on in the game, where we find walkers. <laughs> And you'll need to find some kind of pulse laser or something like that to get rid of these walkers. And there are tons of guns and things in the game, none of which are know where they are, none of which we'll be finding in this play guide, because there's only a minute of it left. 
but what I can say is this is quite awe-inspiring. It is mind-boggling, it is baffling, and it is frustrating at the same time. So I've managed to run my way past the robot droid and we find another robot sentry here who's going to kill us. But I do have respect for this game, even though I'm no good with it. And that's a nice lava flow from a volcano. So that's us dead, I'm afraid. So thank you for viewing this play guide and we'll see you again sometime soon. Thank you.